Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm James. <clears throat> Please excuse my miserable cold. I'm on the third day of it. So uh, I may cough a little, but uh, I ask your indulgence. Um, tonight we're going to make a gong like this for a, uh, an English skeleton clock. Um, I bought a clock well, three or four years ago at Schmidt's auction and the gong was missing so I had to figure out how to make one because you you can't buy a gong like this uh, Meadows and Passmore doesn't have them nobody has them you have to make them if you want one and uh, <clears throat> so I figured out how to make it you can either make it uh, three three rolls like this or you can make it <clears throat> four rolls like this. Okay. Um, the difference being in the tone. This one is going to be deeper than the, than the three. Um, after we're done we'll put one of these in the vise. Um, it has to be in a vise or something very stable to, uh, to make it gong properly. This is what I came up with. This is a tool I made. This goes in the, the three jaw. Um, <clears throat> on the lathe, that is. Okay. That's all there is to it. This piece, as you see, goes right there. And before you start, where's the other one? Before you start, you bend the end over here, right here. And that goes in that little groove, like that. And then this goes on the top like that so you've got that wire sticking out here and that's that's to hold the inner end of the of the wire it's the only way you can get it to work you have to have something to hold the inner side inner, inner end of this um, to make it work properly uh, you, I run the lathe in back gear uh, very slowly I've got a uh, BFD on the lathe so I can turn it down to three or four revolutions per minute and um, then you need something to hold the outer end of this to keep the tension on this so that it bends around here and doesn't just fly out. And that is this. This is just a piece of brass. And these two washers go like that. Whoop. Like that. And the wire goes between them like that and then you can tighten this nut nut bolt to uh, I don't have enough hands here you can tighten this bolt and put another piece up here of the same the same thickness that keeps these two uh, nylon washers parallel you tighten this as tight as you want the tighter it is the more tension you have on this Right, which pulls, which keeps the tension on the wire as it's going around the, the, um, the tool. Okay, that's the basic idea. Uh, now we'll go over to the lathe and set this all up and uh, see if we can actually make one. This is piano wire. It's the biggest piano wire I could buy, and it is. Uh, is that inches? Yeah. It is an eighth of an inch. Um, <clears throat> and I couldn't buy anything any bigger. It's harder than heck. And, uh, but it bends, it bends fairly well. So, uh, uh, a couple other things I thought I'd better show you before we uh, go to the lathe. 
since we have a piano wire of, of an eighth of an inch then we want our um, washer in the middle this piece to be an eighth of an inch it's the same same thickness of the wire right okay there's I like witness marks for everything so there's a witness mark on here that tells how this lies like that okay uh, there's two there's a witness mark here here and here that make sure this goes on in the proper position like that <clears throat> get all the holes lined up And then there's another dot right here, and that tells you where the slot is in the center washer, so that when you put the wire in, you have some idea of where you're where you're going to try to hit that slot. Now, when you adjust these three bolts, you want to tighten them so that the slot in here is maybe 20 30 thousandths over an eighth of an inch so that this slides in there real nicely and it's got to be the same thickness all the way around right it can't be too close on the one side and too far on the other you don't want more than 20 or 30 thou because you don't want that thing to climb over itself let me see if I can show you that's the mark there's the dot right there that tells you where the slot is and here are your two witness marks so that you can see uh, so you can see how this plate goes on the other plate so that everything lines up properly now we're ready for the lathe okay we've cut off our wire uh, this wire if you want a three coil gong it's 37 inches and if you want a five, four coil, <laughs> can't speak, a four coil gong, it's 55 inches. And you want to put the end of it in the vise and just bend that over with a, a uh, brass hammer. Okay, so now you've got the whole piece here. And you want to make sure that your wire is underneath your tension washers um, you can do it the other way I've actually done it the other way but this is this is a little better and then you want to tighten this up oh I forgot my other piece of wire right here just a minute this top piece of wire here let me adjust that just a little bit. It's just a spacer to keep the uh, nylon washers parallel. So we tighten that up fairly well. It lays pretty strong. Now remember the wire has to work underneath the tool because the lathe is running in uh, this direction, the normal direction, and if you run it the other way, which would be easier, the chuck will spin off the spin off the uh, lathe, off the threads. So it's easier this way. It's better this way. So once I get my I've got my bent over part in the in the slot there. I'm just taking this old file 
and get this out of the way and making sure that that's solid in there yep Got it. That's, whoops came out I didn't say it was easy. That's where your your uh, witness dot comes in handy on the outside. Although with the light the way it is, I can look in there and see exactly where the slot is. There it is. Okay. Here we go. See it feeding? Whoa. There we got ourselves a coil. I think I'll run that all the way through because I'm going to have to straighten out the tip of it anyway. Just watch out it doesn't pop back in you, because it will. where you need your glove. It's going to come around. <laughs> it hasn't uncoiled itself yet. Now it did. Okay, there we go. We'll uh, take this back over the bench. Okay, we're back at the bench. As in so many things in machining, it takes you an hour to set up the job and 30 seconds to do it. And that's pretty much the case here. Because once you get it all set up, <laughs> let alone make the tool, uh, it doesn't take very long at all. But there's no other way to do it as far as I know. Maybe there's a trick I don't know, but that's um, that's pretty much it. Now the tail that's sticking out here, we're going to have to straighten that out. There's our gong. There's the... It's not perfectly uh, isochronic, central, center, centered, but that can be adjusted. If you, that has nothing whatsoever to do with the, uh, the tune, the, the, the noise it makes. Let me move the camera and we'll uh, put it on a vise here and ring it for you. Okay, I put it in my little vise here. Uh, if you're going to put it in a clock, it does need to be mounted in a block like this and uh, that's actually a press, a press fit in the block with some uh, uh, 602 I think it is thread locker that works quite well then you can screw it into the the, ba the base of the clock where you hit it on the where you hit this has a bearing on how how it sounds there's a sweet spot, which is right in there. See, out there it's, it's vibrating back. Right here, it's just about right. So, that's how you make a gong for an English 
skeleton clock. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me move the camera up here. Moving the camera is the hardest part of this whole thing. I'll redo that. So that's how you make a uh, a gong for an English skeleton clock or any other clock as far as that goes. So that's it for this evening. I uh, hope you liked that. Um, <clears throat> if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Um, thanks to Tom Lipton and his n mention of my channel on his channel uh, a week or so ago. I've got I got 500 subscriptions almost overnight. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so if you like that, please subscribe and like and share it with other friends if uh, you think they like this kind of thing and I'll see you the next time thanks for watching